Hey guys, it's Seth and Paul for the Learn From Us podcast. We have a special guest on the podcast today, my son, Gio, he's 10. And what we do, we go through some of your favorite stocks, right, G? Yeah, favorite talk about, stocks. We talk about Tesla, we talk about CVS, we talk about Dick Sporting Goods and Target. And Paul shows a 10-year-old how he should be investing and why the financial health of companies. So join us right now on the Learn From Us podcast. Booyah! Yeah. Paul, oh, I'd like to bring in a stock specialist to work on Friday. Um, you know, we have... I just act like I don't know who it is. We have guests, and um, I'd just like to bring him in to give him sort of his opinion on the economy and where is it going, okay? Am I supposed to act like I don't know who it is? Here he is. You see what? Uh, What's up, Gio? Uh, this is our stock it? specialist. This is George <laughs> Robert Kerchanen. Gio, how are you? I am doing great today, y'all. Wait a second, it's George? Yeah, it's George. How did Gio, I, mean, I know, but, but what, what caused Gio to happen? Well, George is G-E-O-R-G. -E. I, I, I got it, I got it, I got it. You know what I'm saying here? <laughs> got me? You got me? So my father's name was George, and his father, and his father, and his father, and so uh, we thought it'd be fun to name a kid George. And then I had a friend in, uh, in college named Gio. I thought it was just a cool name. So I was like, we had this child here and uh, Gio it is. So here he is. Um, Paul, the Hi. reason I'm, why, the viewers might be wondering why we're talking to a 10 year old. And um, the point of all this folks is I, uh, if you've watched any of our podcasts, learn, subscribe below by the way, if you've watched any of our podcasts, um, you can realize that I am the dummy talking to Paul, and I come at him with the dummy approach. So like, wait a minute. I thought stocks, I thought the, st the price of the stock is the only thing that matters in my life. That's what I should look at, Paul, right? I mean, up, up until about a year ago, I would come to you with questions about stocks and say, yeah, but the stock price is X. And you'd always come at me with, well, I don't care what the price is. It matters like the financial health of a, of a business. So I've been trying to discuss with Gio, my son, um, he has about, how much money do you have in the stock market, G? So I have about $2,000 to play with. <laughs> it's not really to play with anymore because, yeah, it's just like I put, I, I have $2,000 $2, in the um, stock market. And um, a couple months ago, I put like, um, or maybe it was a couple weeks ago, but I um, put all of my um, savings into the stock market. So we've been discussing at our house from the tutelage of Paul, the idea is that, you know, if we have some money that we want to invest, um, it might be time. So he robbed, we literally robbed the piggy, bank, piggy banks, right, Gio? Yeah. And we sent the money to uh, Fidelity and we're ready to go. So Paul, you've been talking for months about like some stocks you like, stocks you don't like. Now, Gio, you were a fanboy of Tesla. Tell Paul your story about your single Tesla stock. When did you get in? When did you get out? Okay. So... When te when Tesla was like low, like three hundred, I had I bought at three hundred. My dad got me my first stock, and then I like for a couple for like I've had I had it for about a year, and so I waited on it a bunch a couple months, just checking it like every day. Then I got really tired of it and forgot I even had it, and then I just my dad said, "Oh, your Tesla stock's going up," and then I'm like, "Oh, great." I'm like, what, 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 when should I sell? And then he's like, it's exploding. And I'm like, okay. And it's like, I'm like, it's at 900. And I'm, it's like, it was at 900. When it hit 900, I was like, so should we sell? And dad, my dad asked me, should we sell? And I said, I'm going to wait. But if it goes down, I'm selling. So when it went down, I sold and I made, um, at, I, I sold at about $870. Oh, wow. Look at you, big shot. <laughs> big money. Yeah, it's going back up, actually. I know. Back, so like I don't think it broke 870 yet, did it? Is it at 8, What's it at right now? I, I don't know. Here, let me check. Tesla is 760 right now. Yeah. It was, like, I thought it was, like, it went up, like, I've been noticing, like, 
Tesla never goes like down just a, a little bit. It's always like shooting up high or shooting down low. What's that called? Do you know what that's called? No clue. That's called volatility. Paul, can you like lean your dad's, into Like your dad's mood. It's very volatile. Can you lean into your camera, Paul? It's a little epic. You're leaning big. I like to lean in. Um, okay, so Paul, well, the reason, guys, the reason I'm having a, a child on the podcast is this. I actually think that if Paul Gabriel can explain to a 10-year-old why, why he likes a company and a company's stock at a certain price, um, we might very well be talking to a lot of our potential listeners out there. Am I equating your stock knowledge to a 10-year-old? Maybe, I guess. Is the point. <laughs> I was equating my stock knowledge to someone who only knew, knew nothing about the company, but, um, but, but just, just looked at a price and thought if it was good and or bad. And Paul, we've talked about this on the podcast. As recently as a month ago, my mother, who's 72 years old and retiring, her uh, financial advisor uh, had her put money in Amazon, which as you've discussed on a podcast, is a pretty good could be a very volatile stock if things change. And so not only is it a little overpriced, but again, like, I guess if people, you know, Paul, I think, you know, I read the book, Robert Kiyosaki, and he talks about the idea of like getting your finances in your own hand. I know you're a big fan of not having a financial advisor and, and maybe learning this stuff yourself, but, 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 but um, Robert Kiyosaki talks about the idea of how people will work their entire lives and put all of the money they've ever collected in the hands of someone they hardly know. And I have friends that say, I don't have time. I give it to a financial advisor because I don't have time to learn it. And then I think to myself, it's like you're saying out loud that you don't have time to, to care about where your finances are actually being put because you're still out trying to make more finances to hand to this guy. It's like a, this weird cycle. So like I decided many years ago, I'm gonna try and take this into my own hands and learn as much as I can. And I still don't know that much. So Paul, I, Paul Gio's gonna bring you three stocks that he really likes. Um, he was looking at financials yesterday, so I'd love oh, can to- I ask, Can I make a comment? Go ahead. The only hard part about explaining this to a 10-year-old versus a 25-year-old is at least a 25-year-old has been in the world of paying bills, having credit cards, having a mortgage sometimes. So those are things that I don't think Gio is going to understand as well that will be harder to explain to Gio, but I'm going to do my best to try to break things down into a very basic form that Gio can understand. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So, G, tell Paul okay. which three stocks you've been interested in and, and, and maybe tell him why. Let's hear it, Gio. What? Go ahead, Bird. Oh, um, it's I, my three stocks I picked was Dix, CVS, and Target. I love Dix. Now, why do you love, Paul, that's a great drop we can use for later episodes. Um, Gio, why do you love Dix? <laughs> <laughs> why do you love Dick Sporting Goods? What, what, I mean, just why are you drawn to that? By the way, what was the third company? I was too busy trying, trying to like, get excited about Target. saying that. What was it? Target. 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 Thank you. <laughs> why do you like Dick? Explain. I want to hear why you like Dick Sporting Goods. Because, um, well, the price is pretty low, and I don't have a lot of money to work with. So I like, I'm, I'm liking working with like low um, stocks, and they make – a decent amount of money and their market caps high to me i don't know if it's high in general but it's what's their what's the market cap gl that's impressive that you said that what's a market cap um so i think the market caps how much money they make no but but i, I appreciate you guessing that one um market cap is how much the company is worth oh yeah so like if um yeah so all their shares the number of shares they have multiplied by the share price, and that's what they're worth. Oh. What's their mar what's uh, Dick's market cap? Do you know? Two point five six billion. Let me make sure. Let me verify that. All right, keep going, Gio. I love it. Keep going. Um, the price is from yesterday. It's twenty nine point three nine, so twenty nine dollars and thirty um nine cents. Okay. Thirty bucks. Okay. So, and so you're drawn to this stock because, um, because it's just kind of cheap and you don't have a ton of money to play with, right? Yeah. <laughs> Do you like the company or just like the fact that the stock is cheap? Um, both. Like, because they have big stores and they're selling. And um, it's like they have big stores, they're selling, and they um, are like all around the world, which is like, like I just like 
So recently, I guess it's not recently anymore because it's been like about a year. I've moved and I've seen like there's everywhere I um everywhere I go, there's always a dicks. There's just always a dicks. Mm-hmm. What about CVS? Talk about why you've been an enormous fan of CVS. I've been telling you to hold off on the stock, and I might be wrong. I'd love to hear Paul's thoughts on it, but why do you love CVS so much? You're just in love so, with it. I, I love CVS because, like, in this tough time we have with all these um, med- uh, medical problems, there are a medical shop that you get your goods and stuff from. So if we do ever get a coronavirus um shot or like we do with the flu shot they're probably going to have a lot of it in cvs's because they were the people that helped get rid of they were the people that are helping in their staying open and having drive throughs and okay good point good point are there a lot of are there a lot of cvs's geo yeah there's like like again like i said with dicks um it's um it they they have a lot of stores yeah, it's like know. Every like three miles, there's at least a store or two. You know what I love? You know what I love buying at CVS. Why? You know? You know what I love buying at CVS? Oh, um, no. Candy. You ever? Have... <laughs> dots. I love dots. You love dots. dots I love Reese's. Reese's are good too, but I like dots a lot. Boys, yeah. can we get track on, back on track here, boys? What is the market cap for CVS Geo, and what is the stock selling for? So this one, I was very surprised how high it was. It's eighty point three six billion. Yeah, it's big. And what's the what's the stock at? Um, sixty one point five five. So sixty one dollars. So right off the bat, Geo, uh, uh, if CVS's uh, market cap is eighty billion, and then Tesla's is a hundred and fifteen, a difference of thirty five billion. Why do you think that CVS's stock price is 80 bucks and Tesla's is 800? It's 60 though. I'm sorry, 60. Why is CVS 60 and Tesla 800? Um, that I'm very confused about because Tesla is very not stable. They are, have a lot of money in debt. That I don't know how you say what that. What does that mean, Gio? What does that mean? It means how much money they they have more money to pay than then they like they're not making wow. like wow who's teaching money. this kid all right so so let, let, paul let's start with cvs we can get wait, to wait, 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 wait. where did geo learn this stuff well we talk <laughs> we talk and uh this is, this is impressive the, the fact that he knows what debt is is very impressive and market cap i didn't know what market cap was until i was 14. So, G, let's talk about CVS. You've been wanting to buy this for a while. What was CVS's revenue last year? Um, last year, CVS's revenue was $250 billion. $250 yeah. billion dollars they made? Mm-hmm. In revenue, in revenue. Okay. Yeah. Um, My internet's freaking weak as hell right now. Why is that? Oh, Paul, you can't pull up the tables right now? I- I'm trying to pull it up. I was pulling up stuff fine. Now it's like slow as molasses. Cool. Just keep going. So they had $250 billion in revenue? Yeah, 200 billion. What did, what did billion. Dick's do last year? Quarter mil. Quarter trail. What? Quarter trillion. Wow. What did Dick's do last year in revenue? Um, well, I only, um, I have a lot of the Dick's revenue. 2020 revenue is eight point, um, about nine billion. Well, um, one, yeah, I got you. 28 bill, um, in 2018, it's um eight um eight point five bill billion. Just a cool bill. Yeah, just a cool bill. How far? And in twenty sixteen, it's seven point um seven point three zero um zero billion. Like, yeah, billion. All right, let's talk about Target. What do you like about Target? Okay, so like again with how many stores they have. Everyone, anything you need, you're just like, go to Target. Just go to Target. <laughs> Walmart, nah, go to Target. Oh, Walmart's great. Okay, go ahead. So um, what's the market cap of Target? So market cap is um, $54.85 billion. Oh, $55 billion. What's the revenue? Um, 
five billion? That doesn't seem right. That doesn't. Oh no, seventy-five billion. Okay. <laughs> I missed up a number. <laughs> Literally. And what the? What's the stock selling for? Um, one hundred nine dollars, or one hundred ten. It's about right. one hundred ten. So you picked all retail stuff. Do you know what retail is? Oh, so when they buy it and then they sell it. Well, it's like basically stores. Like when you go, yeah. you buy stuff and you leave, right? Mm -hmm. So you've seen the internet. You've been how old? You're ten. So you were born in 2010, right? Yeah. When I was leaving college, about one percent of the world's of the U.S. Of the, of the sales in the U.S. for retail was on the internet. Now it's like close to 15 percent, I think. I you can't verify. I can't. I, I'm not speaking um, internet sales as, uh, either way so it keeps growing internet keeps growing and retail is having a hard time but i do agree with you companies like cvs where people have to go there for like medicine immediately things like that and prescriptions it's 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 important but there's yeah. a concern when it comes to stores because a lot of stores are having a hard time right now because the internet's doing so well, companies like Amazon are doing really well, selling a lot of stuff on the internet. Does that make sense? Yeah. So a lot of these companies, I like them too from the standpoint of they look pretty cheap. Do you know what that means? It means that you can buy they're, they're, a lot of them for a lot of them for a little. You can buy a lot of revenue for a little bit. But the concern is, as an investor, you've got to decide. All right, are these guys going to do okay in the long run? As the internet sales keep going up and up and up, are they going to be fine? That's a question. Well, you're shaking your head no. You don't think so? Not really. If the internet just keeps exploding and exploding, not there. Because that's kind of scary to, to think about. Like, the internet's going to explode one day and no one will leave their house and they'll all be on the internet. Well, you know, but in fairness, I still like going shopping. Do you like going shopping? Yeah. I love going shopping. Yeah, it's the best. I mean, I still enjoy it, but I also like buying stuff on the internet. And don't forget, yeah. you can go to the internet and buy these, like these guys' website and buy stuff from them. Yeah. So it's, a, so it's great that you brought up retail because you have to, when you are looking at a company, it's not just where the stock is. And it's not even just where the, where the, where the financials. Do you know what financials are? Like, not really. Financials are the statements that show how the company's doing, their revenue, oh, their profit, okay. yeah. their debt, their assets, et cetera. Mm -hmm. It's not just about what it is today. It's about where is it going in the future? Because you're not paid on the past, you're paid on the future, right? Oh, yeah. So the future is what you make your money off of. If mm -hmm. you were only basing your life on the past, how much money have you made in the last 10 years of your life? Very little. Yeah. You've basically been overhead for your family. You've basically just been a cost drain. And they've talked to me about this saying, hey, can we get Geo to drop out of school and start working in the field to make us money? Hmm? <laughs> no, so you have to look at the future of saying, will this company be around? And if they are around for a long time, will they be able to make more and more money as time goes on? Market probably. I mean, they are very big brands. I, I, so I personally believe that CVS and Target will be around for a very, very long time. Same. Dix, I, do I, about Dix. I do worry about Dix because Dix have such big stores. That's a lot of money to spend on store on 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 uh, on, on, on on their rent. You know what I mean? Yeah. How much like how much they um, how much their buildings are? Yeah, it's a lot of money. So mm -hmm. to have all that, you got to be able to sell a lot. Go ahead. Yeah. Let's say um, they have to sell a hundred football gloves to pay for the rent like for a year this just said that probably not a fact that's not a fact or anything probably, I can understand that. I gotcha. so if they only sell if they don't sell enough they aren't going to stay open that is correct that's so like that their bit their online is decent good like they they do it they have an on-sign like they have a they like they have shops but they're not selling that much, to be right. honest. Like, their stuff is expensive. So can I show you my screen right now? Go ahead, Paul. 
this, this might be intense. So please ask me anytime you need help on this. You know, it gets confusing. Um, there we go. All right. So you see this, Gio? Yeah. These are, this is the financial statements for, for um, Dix for the last 10 years. We blow it up a little bit, Paul. You yeah, I, that's what I'm looking for, how to do that. I'm not, uh, oh, try, like, try like a command plus. Oh, there you go, there you go. Great. There you go. So you see their revenue here, right? Mm -hmm. And this year, ending in January, they did $8.75 billion in sales. That's a lot. $8.75 billion. Billion. And they made about $300 million on that. What? That makes no sense. <laughs> Not a lot. They spent so much. They spent so much. Yeah, they spent a lot. So the, the concern I have is now. Here's the good news. Here's some good news and the bad news to it. If you look back, it shows every year revenue. Yeah, but they're making money. They are making money, but let's look at the revenue. In 2011, they did 4.9 billion, then 5.2. Oh, I can't see that. You can't see it. Yeah, I might need to move my thing down. Oh, well, there we go. Nice. There you go. I did it. So 4.8 billion in 2011, 5.2, 5.8, 6.2, 6.8, 7.2, 7. .2, 7 .2. So it's going up every year, right? Yeah. So here's the concern I have though. Last year they did 8.75 billion and they made 300 million. They yeah. need the same amount of money basically in 2013. On make on three billion dollars less of revenue, so they brought in three billion dollars less and still made three hundred million dollars. Wow. Yeah, so that's a concern for me when it comes to dicks. I look at it going now. That's a very we. There could be a m many many reasons why that's the case. I don't know the reasons, but they have many. They have many shops. They aren't selling as much. Well, they're selling more, they're but maybe they more. Them more to sell, or they have to give more discounts to yeah. sell, or they have to advertise more to sell. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of reasons. And more ads. Yeah, all that stuff. So more that's shops. a concern of mine. I go, okay, is this the kind of company I want to be? Now, they did make $330 million a couple of years ago, 320 and 330 but they're on a decline right now. You're like, eh, what's the reason for that? Yeah. So those are things that I want to understand about the company before I – go through with it. And so one of the things I want to look at is something you brought up, like how much is their lease? How much are their leases? Like how many stores they have? Are they opening more stores? Are they closing more stores? Are they closing less profitable stores? I don't know. But the thing is understanding that so you can figure out like, is this company doing the right things to stay around longer? Yeah. If they have a shop in the middle of nowhere. They're not going to get any sales from it. And Correct. They're money. I wouldn't open that shop. That's a good point. But here's the thing that's interesting. Do you know what the P-E ratio is? Mm, not really. So for basically every $1 of profit, how much do you have to pay to, 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 to buy that company? Oh. So theirs is very low. Mm -hmm. On average, the P-E ratio should be around 15 or 18, and theirs is only eight, which means you have to spend less, yeah, it's really low. But my opinion is it's probably because of the declining profit of the company while yeah. sales are going up. Mm -hmm. So I, I think this is a great one to look at for that reason. Because I love Dix. I love going to Dix. It's a great store. Um, I don't think they have a lot of debt, to be honest with you. Let's look at their debt. Like, one, Go ahead. Like... For your birthday, everyone's always just like at my, I'm like everyone like they want sports. Like, 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 to be honest, I think I got like three things or four things just from dicks this year for my birthday. Yeah, it's great. But like, I you probably buy those things on Amazon too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can buy those things on Amazon too, so. So, you know, they have a lot of, um, their, their cash is going down. Oh, here's another thing I want to look at. This is their cash. Every year. So right now they have $70 million in the bank, right? Yeah. But go back in time. They have a lot more. They had a lot more. And it's going down and down and down. So let's look at their debt. Eventually, their debt is going be up and up and up and up and up. So their cash is going down, their debt is going up. What do you think, G? If their debt goes up and their um, cash goes down, they're just going to overlap and 
they're gonna they're they're gonna start being like Tesla, where the debt's going up and the just profits gonna go down. It's it's kind of a concern of mine. I do agree that um, Dix is a great store, but I would not be surprised in five or ten years if Dix was not around anymore. Ten, five or ten. Yeah, I don't. I, I I could see how that would happen. Now maybe Amazon buys them or something like that, but it would be for a very very small amount of money. Like mm -hmm. there's a declining business per. I mean, let me see this. Let, let's something I want to look at. Let's look at this. So, G, do you sort of see that the price of the stock has nothing to do with any of this, really? Yeah. It could be one dollar, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, but if the company seems to be not doing well or headed in the wrong direction. Um, I would not want to put my money into a store that's headed in the wrong direction, right? Mm -hmm. So here's the interesting thing. In 2011, there were 480 Dick stores. Wow. Now there's 726. So they've gone up a ton, yet their profit is the same or down. They have so many more stores and they haven't been able to make more money. So they're having to get, they should get, they should probably start well, last year, it's funny you mentioned that they just they went from 729 stores at the end of 2018 to 726. Yeah, they lost. They 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 put down. Yeah, I believe the dicks in um, Easton went away, didn't it? Mm, I don't remember. I don't know. I don't remember ever there being a dick in Easton. Paul, let's switch over to let's switch over to CBS. Um, okay. I'm, guessing, I'm guessing you're not loving this stock, Paul. I, I would see it, buddy. I would, I would avoid, to me, there's other better buys than dips, in my opinion. Okay. Now let's look at CVS. Now this child loves this. He cannot get off. He wants to buy so much of this stock. I think it's just because it's cheap. Okay. Well, it's low priced. Not low priced. Right. So CVS in 2010 did $96 billion in revenue. That's 107, cool. 123, 126. 139, 153, 177, 185, 194, 256. That's well, pretty good. They, they exploded this year. It exploded a lot. Now, one way, what are the two ways that a company can grow, Jill? More stores, more ways. stairs. More, more stores. stores. That's a big more, way. More sales. Yeah, but how do they do that? I should, say this. I should say this. Hang on a second. What are two ways a company can grow their revenue very fast? One is opening more stores. Because the second you open a store, you're going to get a lot more revenue, right? Yeah. A lot more money to come to the door. What's another way? I'd be very surprised if you get this, but you also knew market cap, so that's impressive. Um, I thought I had it. Um, let's think. Well, it's like... What if, um, they, Gia, what if they basically charge more? If their debt goes down? What was that? If their deck, if like, if they pay off the money. Well, that is one way, but that is one way. And that's actually very smart. You're actually right. You can make more money that way. But revenue wise, the other way would be to buy other companies. So I don't oh. know. Yeah, so they can buy another company, bring it into them, and then all of a sudden the revenue jumps up. So yeah, because like they, they like, they have two places to go now instead of one. Look at you. You're a financial guru and you're only 10 years old. Um, FYI, and I'm not just saying this, you know more than I did at the age of 10. So I don't know how much of this growth from 2010 to now has been because they bought other smaller companies. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. something I want to look at. Let's look at their profit now. 3.4 billion, 3.4 billion, 3 3.8, 4.5, 4.6, 5.2, 5.3, 6.6. They lost money here. Let's ignore that. And then 6.6 .6 again. So their profit's going up, their revenue is going up, but it's still a very small amount. I mean, they, they brought in $256 billion in revenue and they only made 6.6 .6 billion. There's not a lot of margin in these companies. What's margin? Margin's the profit you make. Which is okay. By the way, that's fine. If it's just understanding that and going, you realize that it's always going to be a very low profit margin business. Yeah, so, it's not, they're making money, but it's still. There's, they're making money, which means it's going to stay around for a little bit longer. Because if you always make money, then you'll never go out of business. That is true. But the question is, can you always make money? Like Dix. Dix is making money still, but I, I do get concerns about will Dix, Dix be around in the future? Like, 
like you said, in five to ten years. By the way, I don't know. Yeah. Mix could very well be around in five or ten years, but it'll probably be a very different company in five or ten years if it is around. Yeah, like, maybe like maybe their sales explode next year or something. Yeah, maybe all of a sudden people hate the internet and they want to be able to go into a dicks all the time. Yeah, or like <clears throat> yeah. maybe oh, just like maybe the whole world shuts down and everyone's on dicks. Yes. Oh, what else? Uh, it's what possible. Else, what else do we look at? Like, what about their debt here? I mean, what else are we looking at? Well, let's look at their debt. They're going to have a lot of. They yeah, have, they rent debt CVS pretty much rents all their buildings. Yeah. So they have $158 billion in debt. That's a lot. That's a lot. So, you know, this is a hard one. Because they're because not the, making that much. Yeah, they're not making that much, but they tend to have really good locations. CVS is always in a great corner, high traffic, really good location. That's their big thing. Like, you wanna, we want to be in the number one location in town. Mm-hmm. That's a good positive thing. So they're going to control their, their, their locations that way. Um, let's see here. They have a lot of, I want to see how complicated I get it with you, get with you. Okay. They do have a lot of debt, but I don't know if that bothers me as much because of the locations they're at. It's not like they're in crappy locations. You know what I mean? They're not like, they're not like, behind a gas station right like a target in front of them they're like they're like really? on like a traffic lane where everyone can get to their store like if you have a gas station where there's no entrance no one's going to be able to get into it unless they drive over the curb which is impossible <laughs> it's not that. possible it's just not allowed it's just not allowed so paul what do you think what do you think about this stock <clears throat> Um, I, I'm not well. Let me see here. They have good free cash flow. Um, yeah, I don't actually think this is, you know, from a 500 foot view, I'm not telling Geo to buy or don't buy it. Um, the margin's very low, but it's just high traffic. They pay a good, what's a dividend, Geo? What's a dividend? Um, wait, a dividend. I thought I learned about this in school. I have no clue actually. Well, we did look up, this is one of the highest paying dividend companies, right? Or highest dividend paying company, right? I mean, it's good at 3%. So a dividend means, a dividend means that, <clears throat> that they're gonna pay you money every single year. Oh. So if you, if you invest $2,000 into CVS, every year they're gonna give you $60. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's not bad. It's, it's, it's a way of making some money. It's not a ton, it's not a little. It's a way of making some money. I, I think that um, CVS is one to watch watch out for. Their return on equity, so I'm getting too specific. I'm getting way too specific here on things without getting, um, without getting, um, I think healthcare is gonna be very important as time goes on. And I think that if CVS can really grow their minute clinics and allowing people to go in there and get more help fast, I think that's not a bad idea. I think CVS will be around for a very long. I would be very shocked if CVS wasn't around in five or 10 years. I would be absolutely floored. Paul, what if we showed G a stock you really like at the moment? Something where you think there's value in it in the future? Well, remember, that's where price matters. <clears throat> right. But let's look at a company that has very, let's look at Google. Have you heard of Google? Yeah. I'm teasing. Of course you have. So no, let's look, I haven't heard let's look of Google. At Google. In 2010, right now. in 2010, Google did $28 billion in revenue. That's then 36, then 43, then 51, then 59, 67, 90, 110, 136, $160 billion in revenue it did last year. Yeah. Ready for the profit? Eight and a half billion, 9.7, 10.7, 12.3. 14.1, 16, 19, 12, 30, 34 billion dollars they made last year. How much is their debt though? Well, let's look at that. They so have money, just, they have 150 billion dollars in their bank account right now. 150 billion dollars, okay? That's good. 
Their total debt only seventy four billion. That's not all bad. It's not that bad considering. No, why, why is it not bad? Because they can considering. Oh wow! If you look at the if you look back at like, um, what, well, let's say let's say um, I don't even know anymore. Two thousand well, before, yeah. Yeah, before it was at eleven. Now it's at seventy four. That's just crazy. Yes, but they have one hundred and fifty billion dollars in their bank account. So why they can do pay I pay off have... all of their debt just right now? Exactly. Let's look at let's go to let's go to Dix and see how Dix looks. Um, for a quick quota, um, I don't even know if you call that a quota or anything, but CVS just went down. Yeah, CVS is everybody's down today. Yeah, everyone's down today. It's down three percent. So, if you want to change it, actually, it's um fifty nine now, not all right. Cool. Sixty one. So let's look at let's, 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 let's look at um Dick Sporting Goods. How much cash do they have essentially? Because they have to take out their inventory, blah blah blah. They basically have seventy billion, seventy million dollars in cash. And they have five billion dollars in debt, which, by the way, is okay depending on the kind of business it is. But Google has one hundred fifty billion dollars in their bank account, and they only owe seventy four billion. They can write a check, get rid of all their debt, and still have seventy five billion dollars left over. Yeah. So think of like I was talking to. Um, I was thinking earlier, like. At schools, they have Chromebooks, and they're always on, like, you always or have to be, like, where you are, you always have to be on Google, because Google, like, that's what's providing them. Google, they're paying for Google. So, so do you, have you ever heard of a, <clears throat> have you ever heard of a website called Yahoo? Um, I have. So when, when Paul and I were younger, there was no Google. You had to go to Yahoo to search things. I still have my Yahoo email. Beth does too, my wife, so. Does she really? Yeah, mommy. Um, all right, Paul, so yeah, this, so, um, so I guess Gio would say, but wait a minute, I can't afford this stock, it's 1,300 bucks. Well, um, but that's the thing, you gotta look at what you're buying and say, I'm buying, I'd rather buy $1,300 of Google than $1,300 of Dix. What matters is how much money you're investing, not how much each share. But by but the way, if I make more good. money eventually, if I make this more, if I put my money into Google, and what's it at a thousand? Well, I have two thousand, so I would be oh thirteen. Thirteen hundred. So. But I still think it's expensive. By the way. What does that mean, Paul? I still think that. It. it I still think that. You know. Maybe I, so is that one thousand three hundred thirty-one? Then is it? Yeah, one thousand three hundred thirty-one. I should it be, I'd be able to get it. I think if you bought it, you would probably do okay in the long run. Are there better buys out there? Listen, I will own Google very soon. If it was, let me see where it's at right now. Market cap price value eight ten, eight thirty seven billion. I think if it drops down to a thousand, I'll get Google because then I'll make some money. <laughs> you like Google now? Now that you're talking about it, how much money they make, how much money they I, have in the bank. I think, I think have in the bank. my personal opinion is I'd wait for it to go a little bit further down, but I think it's Same. a better investment than Dix, in my opinion. It's a better investment than Dix. Um, I don't know about CVS. Maybe CVS is, um, CVS is selling pretty cheap relative to profit and revenue. Right? Cool. I, I think that Google is a company that to me is like, okay, I'm really watching Google because I want to buy Google. I think around a thousand, and then as it goes down further, keep buying more. <clears throat> and uh, we went over some Microsoft stock on the last podcast. Well, what about another stock that you really like that's maybe non-retail? Maybe show G something that's not a has a well, Google. Oh, Google. They're not retail. What about uh, a different one? Let's see here. Uh, Microsoft's not retail. Microsoft's not retail. You know what? Geo actually owns some BP. Can you look up BP and talk about well, it? BP's hard. Because BP, I owned BP. I bought. I got lucky. I bought BP at fifteen and sold it at twenty four and a half. I got really lucky. Oh, you sold your BP? I did. I did. I, I, made, I made a lot of money on it. I was like, you know, what? I'm just gonna cash it in. So the thing with BP is, how does BP make money, Gio? What is BP? What does BP do? Um, they're a gas company. Yeah. So how do they make money? They sell. Um, people drive. 
Yeah, that's exactly it. Let me ask you a question. When the economy is bad, are people going to drive more or less? They're not going to. They're not, not going, going to drive less. less. They're going to drive less. Yeah. And how have oil prices done lately? Like, where's oil gone? Have you been paying attention to oil prices? Um. Well, I've ha- I've, I had USO. It's going down. Yeah. Gas, GP makes their money based on where oil prices are. That's why if you see their revenue, it's very inconsistent. Yeah. 297, 375, 375, 379, 353, 222, 183, 240, 298. It's very inconsistent. Yeah. Their profit, they lost 3.7, made 25, made 11, made 23, made 3.7, lost 6.4, made 115 million. Made for you. It's very inconsistent. BP is a very tough company for me to assess because it all is based on where is oil going and where has it been. I do think that BP, oil is very low right now, and BP in the long run will probably do okay. But I can't, I can't say with good confidence where it'll go and what it'll be at. I bought BP not for any reason I discussed about any of the other companies. I bought BP because I was like, Man, it's selling for $15. And the last time it sold for $15 was 1995. And oil prices are higher today at that time than 19. It's okay. going to do better. So I didn't buy it for the long run. I bought it for the short run just to make a quick buck on it. And I managed to make a quick buck, so I sold it. Mm-hmm. And I bought myself a watch. Nice. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so. These are, so as you can see from investing, Geo, it's not just about where the stock price is. You got to understand the company and what they're doing. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Now, with that said. Where the company's going, how it's, if it's going up or down and up and down. Correct. Look at Tesla. How much money does Tesla make in profit every year? Okay, so again, I say it never goes up a lot or down a lot. It's down 73%. Yeah, but what about the company itself? Like how much money does the company make per year? Forget about the stock price. Like the company brings in revenue and how much are they left with profit in their pockets at the end of the day? Um, Don't look at that. The answer is not there. Oh. um, What do you think? You see a bunch of Tesla on the road. You love Tesla. Last year, last year, Tesla did $24 billion in revenue. How much do you think they profited on that twenty-four billion? What would you guess? Mm, Three billion. Okay, okay, that's a good guess. That would be reasonable. They've never made money. What? They lost eight hundred sixty million. Lost almost a billion. Lost two billion. Lost six seventy-five. Lost nine hundred million. Lost two hundred ninety-four million. Lost seventy-four million. Lost three hundred ninety-six million. So they never made money. They never made money in a ca- in a, in a one-year period. Wow. They made money this first quarter this year, but they've never made money in a full year. So sh- okay. I'll show them. So again, I guess the argument is people saying they're growing, they're building more. So show, show them what you were showing me is even if they were growing and building, they still never made money, right? So then there's a thing called free cash flow in Geo and cash flow from operations. What it says is how much money does the company make from selling their product? And that's it. Forget about any other way. They just recently started making money. They were losing money even selling cars until recently. Forget about investing in new factories and plants. They weren't even making money selling cars. They weren't even making money. It was terrible. That stinks. To me, Toyota, how many cars did, did, uh, how many cars did Tesla sell last year? Do you know? Um, is it like 600? 600 what? Cars? Million. No, oh, no. They, they sold 350,000 cars. Oh, that's not a lot. Oh, I guess no, it is. Toyota sold 10 million cars. Oh, well, that's a lot. What, what's Toyota's market cap? I don't know, but I'll check. I'm highlighting it for you. 178, which is 19, so about 180 billion. Okay, what's Tesla's market cap? Um, 130 billion. So, Toyota sold 10 million cars, and they're worth 180 billion. Tesla sold 350,000 cars, and they're there's still only 50 billion behind them. Correct. Do you see how crazy that is? 
Because Tesla's cars are so expensive. But okay, great, fine. But then look at their profit. Well, I don't want to get into that. Right. Uh, tough. What was that stuff? Well, you're right. It's tough when you get into profit and, and percentages. Yeah. So let me yeah. tell you this though. Let me tell you this though, uh, Gio. Tesla sold twenty-four billion dollars worth last year, right? Mm -hmm. Toyota sold two hundred and seventy-two billion. Ten times. Eleven times. Eleven times. Eleven times more more revenue, and they're almost the same market cap. That's absolutely crazy. That is crazy. That's why I'm not a big fan of Tesla. That's why I sold it. <laughs> This is a great conversation, Gio. Did you, did you think you learned a lot? Yes, definitely yes. I look like I have no arms. Yeah. This is good. Seth, what did you think of this conversation? Did I well, I mean, I'm so, I mean I, you know, frankly, um, I guess I had him on because um, you're kind of explaining all of this to me as well. You know, I mean, when he says CBS, we were talking about how CBS is a high dividend company. Um, so when you explain it, you're basically explaining it to me because frankly, I don't know much more than him. I mean, like, <laughs> I don't know much more than him about some of these numbers and what they mean. I am much like a 10 year old. I am learning. I think maybe a lot of our listeners might be as well. The idea that I just see, st I mean, the more you talk about this, really the price of stock has nothing to do with it. I mean, I know you talk about at, at certain prices, you like the buy. Um, but, um, yeah, so, uh, Geo, Paul's been just sort of coaching us to be a little patient, maybe wait for a little more of some of this, this, uh, this uh, to go down, and then we'll start buying some of these. Can I explain one more thing to Geo? Yes. Geo. We can go over Target. I believe, I believe that everything has a price. What do, we, what do you think I mean by that? Everything in the world costs money. I'm willing to buy everything. It's just about what the price is. So, like, you have an iPhone, right, Gio? Yes. What do you, what's your iPhone worth? I have no clue. Mm. Dad, what'd you buy his iPhone for? Uh, so his iPhone was given to him from his grandpa, who found it at uh, one of his uh, rental apartments. They left it there, so. Perfect. All right, a, let's say, hypothetically, you bought Gio that, that iPhone. How much would it cost you? Yeah, they probably, I mean, what are they? Like, are they a thousand bucks, Paul? I don't even. The iPhone 10 or 11 or whatever. The yeah, the iPhone 10 is um, a thousand. Okay, call it a thousand then. Okay. Mine's a six. Okay, so let's say all of a sudden the iPhone tomorrow, somebody offered you, called you up and said, hey, Gio, I'm going to sell you an iPhone 10 for $2,000. Would you buy it? No. See how quick you said that? You even said it to me like, hey, stupid, of course I wouldn't buy it. Yeah. Now, now what if somebody called you tomorrow and said, hey, Gio, I got an iPhone 10 for 100 bucks. Would you buy it? Yes. If it's, if it's still working... And assuming it's all working in the same iPhone, everything's the same. Mm -hmm. That's the way I look at companies. I will buy a company. I will buy any company. The question is, is it selling for the price I want to buy it for? Mm -hmm. I look at every company as an iPhone. I think it's worth this amount of money. If the price is above it, I don't buy it. If the price is below it, I buy it. It's the same company, same iPhone. The price is what determines everything to me after I've understood what it's worth. So I look at all the financials and decide, okay, I think it's worth this. If the price is above it, I don't buy it. If the price is below it, I do buy it. Does that make sense? Yep. Class adjourned. All right, Paul, thanks for the, uh, the insight, Gio. Thanks for your insight as a, st a stock expert in the field. Um, Gio, do you have any uh, social media? Uh, how, how can people find you? Do you want to make any plugs? So you can find me at GeoCavsKid on Instagram. And yeah, that's really it. Geo what about MySpace? Are you in MySpace? What's that? <laughs> Gio. <laughs> MySpace was the first Facebook, Gio. Oh, okay. No, it, no. And it shows how stupid I am, how I'm wrong a lot, Gio. I always said in 2004 and 5, there's no way Facebook will overtake MySpace. MySpace is too big. And now MySpace is, it exists still, but it's very small. So yeah. I'm still wrong in a lot of things. And, but the investing, do you know how many companies out there you can invest in in the stock market? Around the world, everywhere? I don't know. There's like over 20,000 companies. There's over 20,000 companies. 
your job is to find 20 or 30 really, really good ones. So your job is to say no as much as possible until you find one you go, I need to own this company at this price. Okay. Paul, we should have a we should have um, a podcast about penny stocks going back to Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, geez, penny stocks. I, I have I have friends who love penny stocks. They're like, look, if it goes from 0 0.001 penny to 0 0.003, I triple my money. You know, there's an argument to be made. It's easier to go from one cent to three cents and then a hundred dollars to three hundred dollars. Yeah. So, all right, uh, guys, thanks for following us. Thanks for joining us today on the podcast. Subscribe and like below, please. Um, Gio, uh, I'm excited as your as your father to uh, see where you go in the future here, Paul. I um, I guess I, I took too much time in my life to uh, to learn about stocks, and I didn't really know. I'm still still learning, but I'm trying to get this kid. But you're learning sooner than most. I talk to six year olds who still don't understand these concepts. Yeah, well, I, I've been coaching G from the get go, right, G? That if you can get a large amount of money saved in your bank account, uh, you can be a millionaire pretty quickly. Not quickly, but if you save and you're consistent, uh, it's not that difficult to have a few million dollars, Paul, just a few thousand a year. Uh, we were calculating his uh, compounding interest, and it's really funny, Paul, to put in like, uh, okay, let's put in two grand at 8% over the next 55 years. <laughs> like, so $2,000 at 10% over 60 years is $6 million. 2000 a year. 2000 a year. If you're able to save 2000 a year, you'll have $6 million in 60 years. What do you wow. think? What do you think, G Bruce? That's only, only $2,000 a year. When you're 30, you're going to be saving a lot more than $2,000 a year. Yeah. So right. save as early as possible. I love that you're doing it, Gio. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Paul, for your insight. Learn from us podcast. Uh, we, we put out podcasts twice a week. And um, yeah, thanks for following Follow him on Instagram. Follow him on Instagram. Oh, my gosh. Okay. 146 followers. 146 followers. All right. All right, Paul. Thanks, man. See you. Thank you. See you. Yeah. See you. Gio, stay put. Oh.